Yo, what is good, dev guys? It's your boy Kane. Yes, sir. I'm back with another video. This is going to be one of those overview videos where I show you how I set up my inventory system that is working with the asset manager. This is not going to be step by step. Uh, I won't be doing a series on this. It'll take too long. I am currently in school and I'm working on my own personal project right now. So like my time to do tutorials is very low, but I will let you know how and where I got this information from. So this all starts with the asset manager and I can't explain the asset manager as much as I need to in this video that requires a whole series on its own. But this asset manager, all it does is holds some static uh, F primary asset types. I tell the asset manager, hey, this asset type is of this name here. So when you see this name combine or connected to this asset type here, and um, you also need data assets. So the system that I kind of ripped this inventory system from the multiplayer inventory from is this free multiplayer inventory that I got off of the um, internet here. I actually found a video by a guy named Dev Addict. He shows you how to set this up and rip it and put it into your project or a project that he was creating. But this is an inventory that is multiplayer compatible but it uses the old system of setting up things like data tables and stuff like that. So the, the problem with this, and I'm not downing you if you use data tables, but the problem with this is if you're working in a team, which I hopefully plan to do in the future when my game gets a little bit bigger, uh, is this is a singleton object for your inventory. So that means if someone checks this item out or checks this class out or this data table out, you won't be able to add items to this inventory to test your new created item in the inventory. So it, it really could slow down things. It gets, it gets cumbersome. You have to come in here and add a row, set up all the information here. And it, it, I don't know, it just, it doesn't fit the workflow. The thing about the asset manager it, it is, very sexy. You can load certain bundles at certain times. That way your load times are not crazy. And, and it, it's just the future of handling a game with a lot of assets. So it also has this struct here. And this is what this data table is consist of, consisted of, of this, uh, of a bunch of these structs. And my system uses data assets for half of this information. So I had to find a way to both use data assets, which is what the asset manager uses and use structs, which is what this system is using to save and to load and to replicate items in the inventory. And um, the way I did that, if I go into my project, is I created a custom struct and I will be converting this to C++ once I get some time. I've just been testing it and make sure everything's work, working, looking for bugs. So if I go to my Blueprints inventory system, I have a custom struct here called F item. And this struct just holds the item data, which is the data asset. It holds the item count, which I need to set and subtract from uh, at runtime. And this uh, item is locked, which allows me to set an item locked in the inventory uh, oh, so that you have to buy it to unlock it. Uh, because once again, I am creating a store, like an in-game store, not like an online store, like an in-game store where you use in-game currency that you earn through the uh, matches to unlock more weapons instead of using, uh, inst instead of like doing pay to win type stuff. It's a play to win. So the thing about data assets is that the, a lot of the information on data assets are read only. You, you're not supposed to set data on the, uh, data asset. You're not supposed to set a Boolean. You're not supposed to set a integer. So things that need to be set, I have included them in the struct. And that way I could write to the struct, change its values, and then save that struct again and, and put it back into the, uh, to the inventory. So that's all the inventory is. It's just an array of structs. So if I press play here, uh, while I do all this talk, doing all this talking, I haven't showed you guys anything. If I press C here, um, it'll show you the entire inventory for the game. This is my store, quote unquote. 
And this is all the items I have. I have these four weapons and I have these currencies. This won't in the final packaging of the game, these won't actually be in the inventory. They'll just be showing on your UI somewhere. Uh, but the asset manager is what is feeding the information to this inventory system here. So if I go shift F1, I go into my items folder here and this weapons folder. These four weapons are the same thing here. These, these four weapons, these four weapons are these four weapons and these four weapons are these four weapons. You get what I'm talking about? Uh, so let me go back in here. And let me um, let me uh, close this. And oh, I opened up a new one. Let me close this and exit out of here. To show you that this works with the asset manager, all I'm going to do is just create a new type here, create a new data asset, and we're going to name this sniper. And let's just set some defaults here. Let's set the item that we want to give the player to this rifle actor. And let's set the name to sniper. Let's set it to unlocked, not stackable. And let's change this um, picture here to this sniper rifle picture here. If we save that and we press play here, my inventory will talk to the asset manager and get the newly added uh, information. So if I press my inventory button here, you'll see that this item is it has now been added and it is unlocked in my inventory. So if I go to my player's inventory, which is what you will have in game, it'll, you'll have your weapons and your heals and stuff like that. Uh, I can right click on this and equip this and you'll see that I get this weapon added to my player and I can use it and everything works as expected. And the way that this is all working is the asset manager is talking to my inventory component and it's telling the inventory component hey i got some new assets if those assets aren't already in your inventory system go ahead and add those to your uh inventory system and the way that that happens is inside my game instance we we want to first load the game when we load the game all we do is you know i'll do this async in the future but um we want to check a slot and then we want to load that slot and we want to cast it to the actual save game object so that we can get the saved data from there and use that to, to run a for loop and to get all of the items that already exist in this saved inventory because this struct here is saved whenever the inventory changes. So whenever the inventory changes, this gets updated. So we want to break that and check this item data. And if it's valid, we want to add it to the existing inventory items. And the reason I'm doing that is say you got DLC, right? Say you got DLC and you got 50 new items that are in your DLC. Now, when you start the game, this init function will run right here. This will run as soon as you start your game. So the reason I'm loading the game first is because I want to make sure we don't add two of the same items inside of the inventory. That'll mean we'll have all these double duplicate items in the inventory. So first thing I want to do is see, hey, what items do we already have in the inventory? And add those to a, a, an array here. And then when I initialize my store items, I want to check for the types that we want to have in the store, which is right now currency in the weapon. And I want to go ahead and say, for all those types, get all the uh, ID, get all the primary IDs from those and pass those IDs to our uh, asynchronous loader on the asset manager. And those IDs are tied to some F streamable, not F streamable, but some F soft object paths. So we get those paths from those IDs and then we load those paths. And I'm sorry, once those paths are loaded, we parse through them and we have to cast them to an actual object because this is just a just a string here. We have to cast them to an actual type. And then what we want to do is check the type that is loaded from the inventory and see if it already exists inside of this array. If it does, we don't do anything. But if it doesn't, meaning I just add those 50 new items, we got new items. 
we want to add those to the store items. And this is what we're trying to get to. We're passing data to the store items. But the reason this exists is because we don't want to double add items to the store items. So now we go to our inventory component and our inventory component, it whenever an object that has our inventory component is parsed up or is uh, uh, activated or spawned into the level, this will get ran. And we set up our defaults and we check on the server. Everything is ran on the server. We get our game instance and we get that item or we'll get that array of items that was filled in our game instance when we started the game. So now we want to run a for each loop on all of those items and check and see if the, the actual item base class is valid. If that's valid, we want to add it to our store items. And then we take those store items and these store items, this is all, this is how the asset manager works. The asset manager just feel, it just fills this array for us. This just gets filled by the asset manager. And that, is, that helps keep everything to where we can just add an item and it updates, add an item and it updates the inventory. So now once we get this, this array filled, we want to parse through that array as well. And we want to add these items to our inventory. But since this is just, since this information that's just coming in is just a, a data asset because if I go here, all this is is a data asset. We have to tell, we have to convert it to a struct, which is what our inventory is actually holding and saving. So this is a custom function I had to create. And this is not doing anything spectacular. It's creating, a, we create a, a, a temporary struct. Then we set the members of that struct. Now this struct, all it holds is a data asset item count and whether or not the uh, item is locked. So this struct is similar to the uh, the other system where the array of structs is the inventory. So we create a new struct to add to the inventory. So we create a temporary one and we set the members. And remember this struct holds a data asset. So we set the data asset of this struct to the data asset that's coming in through this conversion. And we also get the default value of whether or not this asset is locked and set that struct value to that value as well. And then we output this struct here. And once that is outputted, we add the item to our inventory on the server. And all this does is takes the item it checks and sees if it's already in the inventory. And if it's stackable, we add another one to the stack. If it's not stackable, we add it to a slot. And after this is done, we go ahead and save the game. And this will save the uh, this will save in that slot. And that is how and that is the same slot that our load game is reading here as well. So it's a big circle everything kind of accounts for itself. So this system is pretty, it's pretty neat. I'm not going to lie to you. So, um, yeah, I, I started with the action RPG, but it, you, it couldn't replicate the way that it was passing data around. Uh, I, I will say that this system does need, I do need to get better at UI and stuff like that, but that's not important right now. Cause you know, I'm not, no one is actually playing this and dealing with the UI. Uh, so you can see this is the store's inventory and this is my player's inventory. Uh, right now, I'm not actually doing the logic where I unlock an item and it adds it to my player's inventory because I don't want to do that. When you unlock an item, I just want it to be unlocked in your inventory. And say, uh, say the match is about to start, uh, we'll have like a... a stage inside of the actual match where you get to pick up and equip items and those items will get added to that inventory and if someone kills you that inventory will get spawned on the ground that is why i have two separate inventories um but that it needs to be developed a lot more uh but for now we just you know making sure that i could spawn items from this inventory my players inventory into my 
actual hands here and use them. So yeah, this system is pretty deep. Uh, I know I didn't really explain as well as I would have liked to. There's a lot of moving parts with this system. You have to use your noggin to, to try to put these systems together because I combined the multiplayer uh, ready version of this project here, this inventory component project. I combined it with the logic of the action RPG, which is using the asset manager to, to uh, update an inventory. So I had to kind of merge those two things together. I probably will do a, uh, a longer tutorial series on something like this, if you guys want that. But right now I'm really just trying to get it to work. I want everything to work exactly how I want it to work. And then I'll think about sharing it with the, with the public. Uh, but yeah, that's really all I got for you guys, man. Uh, if you appreciate this video, if you got some ideas on how to improve this system, leave them in the comments. If this helped you improve your system or if you're working on a system like that and it helped you uh, put a fire under your ass or whatever, it got you started, uh, let me know that as well. I always like to know that I'm helping. Uh, my voice just cracked. Jesus. I'm hitting puberty, guys. It's over for me. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.